But, well, like my Uncle Bob always said, whatever tickles your pickle. Anyway. <laughs>once again to Tom's Hit Parade. It is time for Bargain Bag once again. Yes, the last Bargain Bag of the year. I can't believe that by the end of this video, anyway, I will have done 12 of these already. It's just crazy. Uh, but yes, anyway, for those of you who don't know, Bargain Bag is my monthly hunt for burio buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags from the late Skips Records and CD World. And in between opening the two bargain bags, I will talk about a CD that I found or that you may be likely to find in the CD bargains section. I'll review that for you, uh, but before I get to any of that, I review the albums that I got in last month's pair of bargain bags, and, uh, well, it's not going to take very long this month. Uh, it was mostly classical music. Uh, well, the first of the 14, uh, unfortunately, doesn't really count because it was an empty CD case. Yes, it was supposed to have been Sacred Love by Sting, but as you can see, not only, not only was there no CD, there was no front insert either, so uh, that was a big waste of time. Well, actually, it wasn't a waste of time. It, there was nothing to waste my time on. Uh, I have heard the album before, by the way. Just it was, it's okay. You know, it's a Sting album, not bad. Uh, but the rest of them, most of the rest of these were classical. And then uh, next we have a Music Box Christmas. Uh, I was, was kind of hoping that it meant Music Box was in the colloquial sense, but no, it was actually the kind of music you might hear on a Music Box. If you actually have the Music Box, you know, sitting there on your nightstand or whatever, that's it's kind of cute, kind of something to pass the time. But to actually have a CD work full of this stuff to actually listen to it on purpose. If you like that kind of stuff, uh, then, and by the way, before I mention, before I forget to mention, uh, if you want any of the cast off CDs from this bunch, let me know either in the comments on this video or in a direct message on Twitter. I can make arrangements, I can send them to you, I won't charge you for postage. Unless maybe you live in Canada. I've noticed uh, in the last couple of weeks that postage to Canada is rather expensive. But anyway. Yeah, music Box Christmas, you know, really exciting there. And then we have a bunch of classical CDs, uh, six, yeah, six classical CDs. Uh, and uh, Garrett let, left me a message in the bargain bag video saying that he was interested in classical CDs, so hey, guess what, Garrett, you're getting some classical CDs. We have uh, Georgi Ligeti, I probably am pronouncing this, uh, the, his name wrong, but uh, yeah, he's a... Uh, a composer from the early 20th century. I was not familiar with this stuff, had never heard of him before, but not bad. And honestly, I don't really have anything to say about any of these CDs. I'm just gonna, you know, because classical music is classical music, more or less. Unless you have you know, the well-known stuff like uh, The Four Seasons by Vivaldi or The Planets by Holst, which are two of my favorite compositions. Some Poem Symphonique by Liszt, Franz Liszt, or Fliszt, as Victor Borga would call him. And a, a compilation, Family Circle String Favorites, just a bunch of, uh, it's a compilation, what can you say? Uh, Eine kleine Nachtmusik by Mozart is one of the major things in classical music. It's actually by the Boston Symphony Orchestra, so a uh, orchestra with a good reputation in the classical world. Then we have a disc of Debussy, Debussy at Dawn, so nice, cool, you know, relaxing stuff to, you know, get you going in the morning with your morning coffee or whatnot, so not bad at all. And then uh, William Capel is a pianist, I guess, uh, and a bunch of classical compositions from various artists. Uh, Aaron Copland, Mussorgsky, uh, Chopin, of course, is one of the preeminent uh, p classical piano composers of all time. So. And then another compilation, which whose title is in German, so I'm not even going to attempt to say it, but it's got some Debussy, some Rimsky-Korsakov, and some Borodin. So there you go. Those were the classical CDs. And we have a, a hip-hop CD, which this did nothing for me, as most hip-hop doesn't. A guy named Skip. No relation to Skip from Skip C. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, can, what can you say? I mean, I really can't say anything about that. And a couple of uh, local Oregon uh, artists who self-released their CDs. Jim Irwin, he's got kind of a, a country folk sort of stuff going on here. Not bad. But then, you know, didn't really catch my ear. And the same for Ken Ballard, Ken's Country. I can't say much about those two because there's not much to say about those two. Not for me, anyway. And uh, then just about the only major label release here 
was a rock band called God's Child. Just didn't uh, tickle my fancy. You know, what, what can I say? But then there are two CDs actually out of this bundle, two titles, that I have decided to keep uh, for a while anyway. The most relaxing classical album in the world ever. The, the title pretty much sells it right there. It's nice, you know, calming, soothing classical music. Great to put on in background and stuff. It's uh, actually two discs full of stuff, so yeah, almost uh, almost two and a half hours of classical music. So very nice, enjoyable stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm going to hang on to that one, add it to my classical, my modestly sized classical library. And then this one was kind of cool, uh, the Chiaroscuro Songbook. It's uh, jazz, blues, uh, R&B kind of stuff, you know, traditional R&B. Uh, a bunch of good stuff in here, honestly. Um, See, Maxine Sullivan, uh, Woody Herman, Gus Johnson, Cab Calloway, so uh, Joe Williams. It's a nice uh, compilation here. Uh, I'm going to listen to this a few times more. It's, it was very entertaining. Some of the cuts were live, some of the cuts were in studio, so a n very nice mix of stuff on here, so yeah. But yeah, that was the uh, rundown of last month's Bargain Bag CDs. So, let us forge right along and open the first of the two New grab bags. Okay. Let's see what we got in here. Tucker Booth for President. Oh, we'll rap for food too, so it must be a rap uh, album line. Don't know what to say about this because I've never heard of him before. And, uh, downside. Yeah, I will uh, enjoy listening to it, I'm sure. Or maybe I won't enjoy listening to it. I don't know until I hear it. So, uh, and we have, oh, <laughs> Jump 5. Uh, you might be familiar with these kids. They were a minor uh, teen pop group. Uh, well, moderate, maybe. I mean, they, they had some success on, on, like, Radio Disney and that kind of stuff back in the early 2000s, yeah, 2002. Uh, and I think they had a bit of a Christian... Um, they catered to a Christian audience uh, to a, to an extent, so uh, yeah, jump five. Uh, Garrett, maybe you want the CD. Uh, I mean, I, I will listen to it, but I seriously doubt I will get anything out of it because, I, as I recall, way back in the day, I think I'd listened to a couple of their songs. And I like the Eighteens, you know, that the Swedish group that uh, started out with doing ABBA, ABBA covers. I really like them. Couldn't caught a jump five, so. Uh. And we have the Liz Barnes Band. They are yet another group that is unfamiliar to me. Oh, they, <laughs> they made the spine of their CD look like it was a uh, Columbia or Sony label thing, because remember that block lettering in red that uh, are on all of the uh, Sony family CDs from back in the uh, 80s and early 90s? And, huh, romance, music for piano. It, oh, it's a Narada release. I For a minute, for a minute I thought it was classical. Um, Back in my new age phase, Narada was a label that I paid a lot of attention to and bought a lot of CDs of, and so they, they put out some good stuff back in the day. So that is, will be a good one to put on uh, for relaxing background music that you don't need to pay attention to. Then we have Stove. Uh, Burn is the name of the album, apparently. Unless Burn is the name of the group and Stove is the name of the album. Again, I don't know what to say about these because I've never heard of the majority of the artists. And we have H-Town Presents Ladies Edition. R&B or hip-hop, I'm sure it is. Uh, and yes, yet another album I cannot say a thing about because I won't know what's on it until I listen to it. So there you have the first bargain bag. Okay, now on to the CD I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, it's one that probably everybody out there has heard of, at least, uh, but I have to wonder how many of you may have listened to it. I doubt that very very many of you have, because it is uh, 20 years old. It's actually, I think, a little over 20 years old. So, And, of course, a lot of you out there have so much trouble, understandably so, keeping up with current music that you probably don't take much time to go back and listen to. Not that Bare Naked Ladies are oldies by any stretch. Uh, I do not consider them oldies, so don't call them oldies around me. Uh, yeah, stuff for stuff to be oldies in my book, they have to be way older than 20 years old. But anyway, well, before I go any further, let me tell you what the album is. It is Stunt by Bare Naked Ladies. It is uh, their most commercially successful album, and uh, in a way, this is kind of a uh, an 
continuation or an extension of Canada Week, because obviously uh, Bare Naked Ladies is my, I believe it was my favorite, uh, I cited it as my favorite Canadian artist of all time, uh, and uh, this was their most commercially successful album, as I think I said. And of course, all the attention was drawn to the hit single One Week, which in my opinion was just the very, very beginning of what this album had to offer. It's just such a great album, and as I said, I doubt that any of you at all, or very few of any, few of you anyway, have listened to it beyond One Week, which is, you know, as catchy as that song is, and as cleverly written as the lyrics are, and as fun as it is, I think that song honestly got way more attention than it, is, than it deserved. Uh, it's, I, I kind of have mixed feelings about it. I mean, I love the song, but honestly, the way that it absolutely saturated radio, uh, down here in the States at least, uh, when they had written, and, and that's one thing that kind of sticks in my, in my craw, if you will, is that they had so many songs that I thought were better and more cleverly written than one week that nobody paid attention to. But what can I say? It was their biggest hit in the States, and... Uh, so I, that's what I'm here for, is to tell you that that was the least that uh, the album had to offer and that you should listen to the entire album, honestly. Uh, the good songs do not stop there. They just get started with one week. Uh, track two is called It's All Been Done, and that's a very, very catchy song. It's it's kind of like a, a Beach Boys, almost, uh, kind of a melody to it. It's just very, very fun and melodic and catchy. Um, alcohol is another song. And in a way, I'm kind of surprised that Alcohol didn't become an absolute party anthem for college campuses and frat houses across the country because it is in a way a celebratory anthem about alcohol as the title implies but also um because of uh stephen page's i think stephen page's had a history with substance abuse that uh it also describes addresses the downsides of alcohol so he probably wrote that one from experience of uh, the next song after that is call and answer and that is one of the most beautiful and uh, poignant ballads I've ever heard uh, out of Bare Naked Ladies or anybody else. That's just a fantastic song, a standout on this album. Uh, it's just uh, wonderful. And it, it has to do with, uh, near as I can tell with the lyrics, uh, it has to do with a couple who is uh, debating very strongly about whether or not they want to restart their relationship. Uh, they have a, a comp very comp complicated history, and so it's kind of a, uh, you know, do we or don't we go there again sort of thing so it's it's a very very poignant and uh, heartfelt song and then uh, some fantastic is a song that's on uh, later on in the album it's another it's kind of like it's all been done it's a bit more of a, a bouncy sort of song but in a slightly different way not so much beach, Boy, beach boys as it is you know just other just it's just ear candy what can i say and then uh let's see who needs sleep is uh, kind of one of the uh, more funny or uh, light-hearted songs that did it, it uh, show, showcases their sense of humor as well as uh, the one right before that never is enough it's just i mean great song after great song on this album uh check it out if you haven't yet i, I will not fault you at all for skipping past one week since you've probably heard it seventy-five thousand times but yeah the rest of the song is the, the rest of the album rather is not to be missed it's just it's it's a wonderful it's probably Maybe not my second favorite Bare Naked Ladies album behind uh, Born on a Pirate Ship, but it's, it's very close. It's in my top three, probably. So yeah, Stunt by Bare Naked Ladies. Give it a listen if you haven't yet. It's a fantastic album. And since they're right up here, I will put it right back, file it right back where it belongs, right there. So I don't have to file it later. So now on to my second and final bargain bag of the year. Not just of the month, but of 2019. A bittersweet occasion, but as I mentioned before, I've got enough of a back stock of these to carry the feature on through, I think, through 2021. So, bargain bag isn't going anywhere. So, let's take a look at these. Oh, it's a sampler, Spring Sampler 87, and it is a uh, Jazz and New Age, so it's got Acoustic Alchemy, Edgar Meyer, and a couple other artists I have not heard of, so find an uh, instrumental sampler there. To. And what do we have? Jim Brunberg. Never heard of him. Love Express is the name of the album. Definitely give it a listen. And the comments here are going to be brief because I've never heard of most of these uh, artists or albums. OS Ben and Renzo. It uh, appears to be a hip hop or, I don't know, maybe a hip hop album. Perhaps. I don't know. That's why I've got them here, is to listen to them. I never know when I'm going to hear something 
new and amazing and wonderful. And uh, Lunar Asylum by Mark Mayerhofer. Again, I've never heard of this guy. So. And then we have something I have absolutely no idea what it is because I cannot read the uh, the cover. Oh, it's a Japanese. Oh, it originates in Japan, but it was distributed by uh, Dutch East India Company out of New York. So it looks to be a Japanese compilation. So uh, J-pop, I don't know. J-rock, who knows. Next to last CD in the bunch, Andre Afram Asmar, a uh, Middle Eastern, apparently, uh, artist. Race to the Bottom is the name of the album. I wish I could comment on these, but you can't comment on something that you don't know what it is. And then we have Colors by the Lars Muller Group. It uh, looks like jazz. Uh, Lars Muller is tenor sax. And we have a guitar, uh, keyboards, bass, and drums in with the, uh, with the mix. So, Well, another interesting batch of CDs to round out the final bargain bag of 2019. Can't believe the year is just about over already. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. But uh, yeah, I will let you know what's what with the CDs uh, at the first weeks of 2020. But anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.